Natalie and Brulia and Torn. It is 20 to 3. Alison Ferns here with you until 4 o'clock. And it's time to meet our My Life guest. There are places I remember in my life. I love you more. Mike Dix is an author from Brighton. Um, he's written a book. When I say you've written it, I mean, I, it's really more your dog's work, to be fair. It's all my dog's work, <laughs> absolutely. She's actually listed on Amazon as one of the authors. I love that. And this is Scrabble. Scrabble. The yeah. wonderful Scrabble. Uh, tell us about Scrabble. Sadly, Scrabble can't be here. Scrabble can't be... Well, she can be here. You guys were very pleased to see her but I do have another place to go afterwards and they said we can't let dogs in oh dogs. that it is cheers an office up to be honest yeah, absolutely you, so. tell us about Scrabble how long has Scrabble been in your life how long have you been in Scrabble's life uh, yeah how long did how long since Scrabble discovered me um, I got Scrabble from the all sorts rescue center up in the downs in January last year and uh, I kind of fell in love with her on the internet. She's a beautiful stretch um, Jack Russell, really. She's a cross between a Dachshund and a Jack Russell. And uh, they, they picked her up from all sorts. And uh, she was sick in my car. And she... <laughs> was a good start. She weed on the floor of my oh. flat. And sat there looking rather forlornly at me. And I just thought, what have I done? I've got a dog and it does this terrible stuff. <laughs> and um, <laughs> rather than send her straight back, I drew a couple of cartoons of her. Uh, and put them on my social media pages and uh, got a lot of likes for, for what we were saying. And I was trying to try to look at it, the world from Scrabble's point of view and explain why she'd just weed on my floor. And I figured it was because she thought my floor was dirty and needed a clean. <laughs> needed a clean, I love it. And that kind of kicked off this relationship where Scrabble bosses me around, tells me how to live my life. Um, and that's what the book is really, isn't it? It's Scrabble's guide to other dogs on how they should and shouldn't handle their human. Yeah, Scrabble's got a stupid owner and uh, she's trying to train him to be a better human. And, <laughs> and how's that going? Uh, yeah, Are you she's, improving? She's doing a grand job, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, it really it was... I, I kind of posted them online really for my pleasure and uh, you know um, I think it was Scrabble's influence but then um, we, we got uh, uh, Scrabble got an email from uh, a publisher from the lovely Jude Brooks and uh, she wrote to Scrabble saying dear Scrabble I don't know if you can get Lazy Mike to <laughs> do anything about this but I'd love to publish your cartoons as a book it was never intended as a book at all and uh, I thought well I'll write back as Scrabble and uh, I'd, Scrabble's just awesome at doing deals. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we'd agreed a contract before I even revealed it was me doing the typing because Scrabble's paws don't really fit the keyboard very well. Love um, it. So, yeah, it's, uh, she's been the making of me. Well, I was going to say, you credit Scrabble, don't you, for, for kind of really helping you through what's been a really difficult time. I genuinely got her for, for the exercise. Two, well, two reasons. One was to prove I was a responsible human being. And, uh, and some company and uh, and the other for the exercise because I'd gone through chemotherapy mm. um, uh, six months before and um, uh, for the CLL which is a form of leukemia and uh, the leukemia is bad enough um, although uh, they call it the good cancer because although I'm clear of it at the moment uh, I'll uh, I'll probably get it in the next seven to ten years again mm. um, but the chemo really kind of destroys you it's um, it's emotionally difficult to cope with you're ill by the time you're doing chemotherapy um and then it's uh, it's six months of um i don't like to think about it actually it's, it, i'm fairly positive about my cancer <clears throat> um but the chemo was horrible and uh had all sorts of impacts on on my life and my family's life and i really just wanted to get somewhere that changed my life made the most of of uh, the fact that i was pretty much free of it after chemo and needed to build up my strength again and came to Brighton and found Scrabble. And those, you know, without the cancer, those two things wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. So. Mm. That diagnosis, though, and you said yourself, you know, there's every chance it could come back in seven to ten years. Gosh, I can't imagine what that is like, living with that knowledge. At the moment, it's OK, because I'm clear. Um, it, it, the, the leukaemia charities and the doctors, my wonderful doctor who's in the first book, um, tell me that uh, there's a process called watch and wait, which is the treatment that I'm on now. Every six months I have a blood test uh, to see if the leukemia is coming back. Right. And um, well, That must be nerve-wracking Just before that blood the test, results. it's yeah. fairly nerve-wracking. But actually I have a great doctor in Brighton who's just set, set up, I can go and have a blood test whenever I want. 
and I can look at the results of that and tell whether it's something I should be concerned right. about or not. And um, that that's quite reassuring. Mm. So it's a it's a fairly for a lot of people it is actually a very traumatic process. Yeah, watching I bet. Wait. it's it's terrifying to think maybe that comes back. And if you're very tired, it, to be honest with you, if you've been out drinking and the next day when when you get to my age, you know, cancer and a hangover feel pretty much the same. Right. <laughs> and uh, so you know, I get little scares where you think, oh, I don't want it to come back. I just not now. I I uh, I'd like to do some more. Um, I'm not one of those people. I think I think that uh, has had this re- revelatory moment after cancer that says, "Okay, I've got to seize life and run up mountains and do all that stuff." And uh, my brother's a runner; I never will be. But um, but actually, it does make you think. Well, I've got to live every day yeah. while I'm fit and healthy. Then let's do all the things that I want to do. Um, and when I get ill, I I kind of I'm setting my life up now so that when that happens again, I'll be fine. Yeah, um, I'm pretty confident the treatments are getting better and better. Yeah, and, no, um, definitely. I mean, they're making advances all the time, aren't yeah. they? And, you so know, you do chemo and you sit with people with terrible stories that they've got acute versions. My, mine's a chronic version, which means I'll die with it, but not of it. Right. Um, and but I'm guessing you sat next to people who perhaps haven't... With acute leukaemia who... Um, yeah, who didn't make it. Didn't make it, gosh. You know? That is, yeah, really so tough. So you have to be pretty grateful for that, that uh, yeah that yeah but still you know a horrible horrible thing to have to, to have to go through but it sounds like scrabble has been by your side you mentioned you got you um got scrabble from a rescue mm, center from all sorts so do you know much about scrabble's life before i do you were um, introduced yeah she was rescued by uh, a lovely irish woman called kate from ireland um there's uh because of the internet uh, the internet has been the making of me but it's also got dark sides as we know and uh, buying a dog nowadays is something that you pretty much do on the internet. It used to be you had to get a license and go to somewhere to get one. Um, and therefore, there are lots of puppy farms around. Mm. And particularly in Ireland, um, there's, there's quite a problem of, of puppy farming. And Scrabble is uh, what the farmers call a, an accident. She's a, a cross between a Dachshund and a Jack Russell which makes a stretch Jack Russell with a nice, kindly, slightly dumb temperament. She, she will never forgive me for saying <laughs> that. I hope she's not listening. Um, but, um, but she's a beautiful dog, and, and it, which I find ironic that they don't treat these dogs yeah. as sellable dogs. You know, called Jacksons, you think, well, I want five of these mm-hmm. and call them the Jackson <laughs> Fire. Um, but this Kate uh, drives around in a Land Rover, turns up at these farms and says, just give me the dogs. And she just takes um, them on. Puts them in the back of the, the van and then ships them over here and um, distributes them to various um, rescue centres. Um, Thank God she does, because I'd like to horses. think what would happen to them otherwise. Yeah, just one of those amazing. I think, apparently, I'm told she's about five foot tall um, and. Uh, rescues dogs but Scrabble doesn't really like travelling in cars or lorries and I think that's probably a result of the a trauma, trauma mm. of being taken from there um, and uh, yeah, I think if you get a dog you should get a dog from a rescue centre because there's too many dogs to be mm. honest with you again Scrabble won't forgive me for that with all our friends <laughs> but there are too many dogs and buying them just to get a pedigree breed or something it doesn't make any difference mm. looking after a dog well and having a good dog um, it's important that we rescue as many of them as we can. Yeah. And now you and Scrabble have the book. You also have a calendar, which I'm holding uh, in my hand. Yeah, I, I bribed you with a calendar. My first it, calendar for it, 2018. It, it, I can it, really it. start planning ahead now, so thank you yeah. for that. Um, you also handed me a picture of a Brighton this and is, Hove bus, which has been doggified. This is one of the most exciting things ever. The um, yeah, And it's, it's absolutely fresh news because uh, this is revealed tomorrow. Um, I did a joke uh, online about a bus um, because Scrabble doesn't bark very often, but she turned around and barked at a bus the other um, couple of months ago, and uh, and I thought, why is she doing that? So I did a fairly lame joke, I think, um, that just said. Uh, it's a little known fact that in the wild wolves used to chase buses <laughs> and uh, and that's why domestic dogs now bark at them <laughs> and the bus company bless them loved this tweet and asked me if i would do some work for their website to design Great. for dog friendly buses and i drew a load of dogs in a bus uh, with me chasing the bus and then uh, carol the marketing director at the uh, brighton Hope bus company then suggested uh, would you like to put those dogs on a real bus and it, Brilliant. And it, this bus, the, will it be the number 25? The 25. Uh, bus number 105, but it's the, it will be on the 25 route. Um, 
And this and will be unveiled in the tomorrow. World yesterday, I've got some real photos of it that came through this morning. Um, yeah, and uh, there's some local dogs on there. Um, some of Scrabble's friends. Um, <laughs> there's some dead dogs on there, which oh. is, um, it sounds horrible, but... Uh, it's a nice memory. Well, I did commissions. Tribute. People ask for a cartoon of them and their dog. I see. And a number of times people um, share pictures of a lost dog. Um, and uh, so it's, it's quite a pleasure to put some of those and immortalise those on the bus. And there's a couple of windows at the front um, with uh, two blank spaces, which we're hoping to fill with a local two local dogs. Uh, there'll be a competition launch tomorrow. Oh, it's like a doggy X Factor. It would be great. <laughs> uh, although I think we're going to randomly choose which dogs to do. Right. Because I don't want to judge anybody's dog, basically. It will probably be a breed that isn't already on the bus. Um, but, uh, yeah, you'll be immortalised on the uh, the X-25. Perfect. Well, you'll be able to see this bus if you take uh, route at number 25 on Brighton and Hove buses. I think that goes from the universities to Hove, is that right? Universities to Hove, yeah. It goes past my window. Oh, you'll be able to exciting. wave. I was it... talking to a bus driver about it this morning. He said, oh, I've seen it. I saw it yesterday. I'm really hoping to drive it. Oh, I love it. So... Just the visions of them all out the bus depot. I want the doggy bus. I'm on the doggy one or they, else I'm walking. They're calling it the doggy bus. And Scrabble is now... Now the dog in residence for the Brighton and Hove bus company. Oh, very Which is grand. ironic because Scrabble is so scared of buses. Um, but she does ride the bus um, because where she is today with uh, my friend Alex um, and his lovely daughters, um, I have to take a bus up to Preston Park to take her there. And uh, Scrabble sits there shivering on the bus. Oh, but the people her. on the bus are so lovely. They're, they're, lots of people come up and sit and stroke her and talk to her and stuff like that. So um, she's getting more and more used to it. So. Uh, we've been talking this afternoon about um, fur jazzling. I don't know if this I is heard. something you are familiar <laughs> with. I'm going to get your thoughts on it after this. This is BBC Sussex with Alison Furlands. You join me mid-conversation with our My Life guest. Uh, Mike Dix is from Brighton. He's here um, telling us all about uh, his lovely dog, Scrabble. Um, and Mike and Scrabble have written a book. It's a, it's kind of a guide for other dogs on how best to handle your human. Uh, Scrabble has been working on Mike now for <laughs> for a number of months. 18 months. <laughs> and, uh, and doing pretty well. I'm still a work so in far. progress. Little think, bit, yeah. little bit. Um, we were talking earlier about this new craze, apparently, called for jazzling yes where you dye your dog's hair you paint its nails i can tell already from your face ah <laughs> uh, you're not keen on this i think scrabble would never forgive me for doing that but you know some people put a lot of effort in people love their dogs really love their dogs uh, i was at uh, the brighton pride dog show uh, with oh yes recently and the fancy dress costumes were just hilarious um, what had people gone for? Give us an idea. Oh, there were there were well, there were people dressed uh, in both of them in the same frock, the Brilliant. dog and the man, and um, there was a bumblebee dog and uh, <laughs> and a fairy dog, and they were just they were amazing. <laughs> um, and I think for things like that, it's great. Bit I of think, fun. Um, I, t having said that, I dress Scrabble up a bit because um, a lovely local lady, Joy Flowers. Um, wrote to me and uh, said, have you got an old shirt? Because I, I draw myself in the same shirt, the shirt I'm wearing now, um, in, in all the books, and uh, mainly because it took me ages to draw the check pattern on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got it, we're sticking with draw it. Another one. So I brought a few of these shirts, luckily, and um, Joy contacted me and said, I'd love to make a collar for Scrabble. And she made this beautiful collar and lead Aww. out of one of my old shirts and a pair of jeans. And so I do sort of dress Scrabble up a little bit, but she does look at me with disdain if I try and put a dicky bow on or something. Fair enough. So you draw cartoons then of people and, and their dogs. So people come to you and yes. you go and meet them, or how does it work? They send you a they picture? Send me photos. Uh, right. And uh, I, the first one I did, this woman wrote to me and said, I'd love a cartoon of um, um, my husband and, uh, and our dog for his birthday. And uh, I said, that's great. Well, send me some pictures uh, and, and I'll see if I can do that. And uh, she sent me about 30 pictures of her dog. Wow. And then she <laughs> Just said... Just one of her husband. I, no, I said, <laughs> I'll need a picture of your husband. She said, oh, I don't really have any of him. Just draw, <laughs> just draw a fat, red-faced, bold man. That will do. I think we know where her heart lies. It kind of typifies <laughs> my readers, I think, because I, I, I would sort of define them as women that love their dog much more than their husband. <laughs> 
and, and the mic the mic in the book who I think is much more adorable than me but pretty stupid I think kind of represents their stupid husband most <laughs> of the time. so it's um, mm. yeah that, but it's lovely when you do that and people send me a photo of it on hanging on their wall which I kind of love as well so. um, and this has opened so many doors for you I mean you were telling me earlier that you were contacted by a famous face who well, spotted one of your cartoons online when I put the when the first book came out on Amazon I, um, I said, well, send me a picture of your dog and you and your book, and I'll share them on Twitter and uh, Instagram. And I got a load of these pictures through, and I'm looking through them, and there's a picture of somebody, I thought, well, I recognize that person, and they've got a blue tick next to their name. I don't know that many people with blue ticks. Who is this? And it's a guy called Miles Hunt, who's the lead singer of The Wonder Stuff that did uh -huh. the great song Dizzy yeah. um, back in the day. And I wrote to him and said, well, thank you for doing that, Miles. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for Dizzy. And he said, no, 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 I really love your book. I've just got a dog. Would you draw a picture of uh, myself and Erica, my partner, and our dog? Um, so I did that. And then he said, what can I do back? And I said, well, I've got to do a, a little animation. Would you write me a ditty? And he said, I have never in my life been asked for a ditty. <laughs> But I'll do it. Can you define ditty? And I went, no, look it up. Just send me a ditty, a Mike and Scrabble ditty. And he's sent me this absolutely lovely song he and Erica recorded. Um, and then uh, they're going to do an acoustic version of one of their songs called um, uh, Cartoon Boyfriend. Brilliant. Which is pretty appropriate. Well, we're you and make Scrabble, a you and Scrabble are just unstoppable. Pop videos, Scrabble. books, calendars. As, as Scrabble often says, you could always get a better illustrator <laughs> and replace it. Contractually, like we're only obliged for one more book. I think. How can people find out more? Just give us the website. MikeandScrabble.com. Um, or look for Mike and, and it's the ampersand and, just okay. to make it awkward, yeah. but Mike and Scrabble on Amazon or on Google. Right, well, we need you to come back with Scrabble next time. With me.